So I've been thinking about retail customers and all the great interactions I have with them. Uh, so I work at a, a, well, I guess by describing the store, I'm going to sort of give it away. But I work at an office supply store and I work in the copy and print department. So in the copy and print department, you know, we're making everybody's prints and banners and stuff like that. And with that comes its own, you know, uh, legion of issues, I guess you can say. Because it's sort of where retail and service can combine. So, it's, you know, we have your average retail customer that will get upset over the little list of things. And on top of that, we're producing a product for them. Like, we actually create what it is that they want. So we actually are sort of responsible for, you know, any defects or things like that. Um, so I've had, you know, my share of angry customers. Um, sometimes they'll get pissed because we didn't do an order correctly, and some of them are more understandable than others. You know, there's one who came in and was, he was very upset that we didn't do his custom stamp correctly. Uh, it was one letter off from what he had ordered, and it was just a simple typo. It was my fault. Um, which, yeah, that's my mistake. He wasn't super understanding, though. He was pretty upset. But, you know, that might... I, that sort of falls under the understandable umbrella category. There was one, though, who ordered a large foam-mounted poster. And in the corner of the... the So a foam-mounted poster, it's, you know, you put your poster on, like, sort of a yard sign material, except it's a little thinner. So the corner of the yard sign material was a little scrunched up. The poster itself looked perfectly fine. But because that corner was just imperceptibly scrunched up, she wanted us to redo it. And there's certain policies with when we do and do not redo things. And unfortunately, that fell under the uh, redo category. So we had to redo the entire thing because of the one scrunched up corner. Um, so again, you know, the product would have been functionally identical. Hardly anyone would have noticed. And if they did, who cares, you know. But no, that, that warranted a redo. So you'll have people as unreasonable as that. The other, you know, sort of uh, type of unreasonableness, I guess you could say, would be how soon they want their order done, you know. I mean, you have these wonderful people who come in and they want five copies, and is it okay if I do that right now? And it's, you know, it's like, of course, absolutely, that can be done super easily. Then for every one of those, you have someone who comes in asking for, you know, 36 blueprints, and can this be done by this evening? And it's like, well, absolutely not. <laughs> we only have one printer that can print blueprints, and even if we were printing blueprints non-stop until this evening, it might not even get all of them done, you know? It just wouldn't be physically possible, even if it was. There's already 20 people in front of you, so that's not going to work, you know? And that's the other thing. People don't understand the, the, the workload. They don't understand the line, because they're like, well... Well, why can't you just get it done now? It's like, well, there's a bunch of orders in front of you. You know, we have to get, take care of these online orders, which is where you're supposed to be ordering it anyway. We have to take care of these orders that have been sitting behind the desk for days on end. But I guess the whole thing has made me realize just like, I mean, you, I think the vastness of society and humans in general is often like, you don't often appreciate it, you know? Because for every customer that comes in, and maybe I know their name because they have a rewards phone number, but, you know, for every one of those, I mean, there's, well, I, not for every one, for every, like, 20 of those, there's maybe one you have sort of a human interaction with. Some of them are, you know, quite negative, because they'll tell you all these reasons why they need their order done sooner rather than later. And I think the tough part is that sometimes you do have to be kind of, you know, just not empathetic at all. I mean, you can't make exceptions for some people. You know, I mean, there's extenuating circumstances. I think the most we've ever sort of been to the rules was for a woman who had just lost her 19-year-old son in a motorcycling accident. But that was, I mean, that's as far as it goes. You know, there's some people who, well, I need to make this deadline by whenever. And it's like, well, we're sorry, we can't help you. We have to, you know, go by the order that things came in. Or there's, you know, some people, and some people, I mean, they're, some people, you believe their stories. Other people, they, they, they're clearly not 100% there. So this, this one guy, he's, you know, every time he comes in, he wants to print out these affidavits and all these court documents. And he's talking about, you know, this big thing that's going to happen. And he's speaking in very vague terms about 
these big corporations that he's going to take down. And when we can't print his order correctly, he tells us he's going to take us down too. And, you know, people like that, it's it's actually difficult to not laugh while they're talking because you just know it's it's so, you know, it's so bullshit. They're obviously don't have nearly that much influence. But for some people, it's it's hard to tell them no, you know. I mean, there there's some people who clearly need the help, and it's like, well, we there's not much we can do, you know. I mean, there's this, and sometimes I I guess I don't feel so much sympathy because they come in, you know, right before their deadline, and they ask the world of us. And it's like that's not gonna happen. You needed to come in a lot sooner than that. Um, but I guess it just you know makes you think about like you think about yourself and all of your struggles and your dreams and aspirations and it's really just mentally impossible to multiply that by the 300 million americans you know because 300 million like what, what does that number even mean i mean it's already difficult enough to fathom the however millions of people that live in the greater seattle area but beyond that you know 300 million i mean that's you can't even begin to because really your mind isn't equipped to think about a number of that scale because in a practical sense you never need to deal with it you know like you can think of really i think the last number you can really have a solid grasp of what it means in the thousands you know once you get to ten thousand you start to slip from you know really understanding it and i think much beyond that it gets even more difficult because there's numbers like you know 100 you can easily imagine 100 but if you get too far beyond that then you're going based on that 100 number. So I think, you know, 10,000 is definitely the last number you could easily grasp because that's, you know, 100 multiplied by 100. But even then, that gets pretty mind-boggling. So I guess, you know, it's on top of that, trying to fathom all these different people, you know, it's, it's interesting to see that some people sort of have an intuitive grasp of that and will say, you know, if this could get done in, by next week that'd be great and we're like oh well we can get it done in 48 hours yeah and they're so appreciative of that and they think it's the greatest and there's other people who you know they want it done now and they want it done immediately and i even had one guy tell me he's like i explained to him that we have a queue of people in front of him and nine times out of ten when i say that there's pushback you know they're they don't understand it or well i thought we could get it done and blah 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 or i've been here before and whatever you know it's well, sure, you've been here before. You're probably here in early July when we literally have nothing going on, you know, or you're probably here right before a, a holiday apart from Christmas where people don't really care about what they're printing, you know, so there's not a lot of jobs so we can get things done right away. Yeah, you're probably here at a different time, but things are different right now. You know, it's it changes day to day. I mean, I'll come in one day and they'll say, hey, we're at a 48-hour turnaround right now. Make sure to tell the customers that. I'll come in another day and they're like, yeah, we really don't have much to do today. And I, you know, customers just, some of them just don't grasp that. They, and even if they can sort of mentally understand that there's people in front of them, there's still that element of denial that like, well, but this, I need this, you know, as if the 20 people in front of them don't need their orders. And of course, yeah, there is a bit of need versus want. I mean, maybe in a perfect world, there was, a, there'd be a different line for posters and banners than for like legal forms and documents but it's i still i mean i you know think back to the whole thing of well you just should have come here earlier if you could have like and if you can't you know there was one time this woman had just gotten all these forms she needed printed out for uh you know a court hearing or something and she had just gotten them 30 minutes before coming in the store and needed them uh the next day and it was like 500 pages and so I told her we couldn't do it. And she's like, well, I need these. I need these. And so, you know, sometimes there is a breaking point. Um, don't actually try this. But if you're annoying enough, we'll either kick you out of the store or just get it done. Um, and then when she explained that she would only gotten it 30 minutes earlier, I was like, oh, okay. Well, you know, that makes sense. You really couldn't have done anything better to get here sooner. So that's whatever, you know. But I just, I guess looking at some of these people, you know, like I said, you know, there's so many of them that you just don't really interact with that much. You just kind of get what they want and, you know, get them moving along. Because most people are sort of in that neutral territory. Maybe a little bit, you know, neutral to selfish a little bit. Like, hey, I want this and I want it done now. 
and you just get their order done for them and you give it to them and you know they're on their way and you never really have any other interaction or sometimes when i'm working a cash register you know it's the same thing and all they really care about is getting their rewards points or things like that and i mean you say the things like oh have a nice day how's your day going but those things don't really you know mean a whole lot i think a couple times i've actually you know remembered an interaction was this one guy i remember in particular who's really cool like i was just getting his stuff checked out and our computers were really slow because they were made in the 90s so while i was loading he just says you know he starts talking about the crypto market and i'm not even super into cryptocurrency but i guess he could tell you know we're both guys in our early 20s so that's you know somewhat of a topic of interest that's actually you know of interest instead of oh how's your day or oh, how's the weather you know stupid things that anyone can relate to you know this is something that could be sort of exclusive between us and so i think those kind of customers they're like the golden people because i mean you rarely ever get them who honestly try and make a you know an attempt to make an interaction with you that's you know special and different than any other interaction you could have with other customers and i mean of course that's not required i'm not asking every customer to be my best friend of course not um i mean it's it's enough that i get paid to be there i don't i don't need to i guess be super great friends with all my customers but i just appreciate that effort to you know acknowledge the human behind the employee you know because a lot of people, I, I do sometimes feel like, I mean, the stuff I do, this is actually one of the first jobs where, like, the stuff I do, a computer could not do it. I've had jobs before, though, where it's like, yeah, a computer could be doing this. This is useless. But, like, the stuff I do, a computer couldn't do. But it's still, like, dealing with all of these customers. Like, sometimes, apart from my name tag, I'm like, am I even there as a human? Or am I literally just, like, an obstacle in between them and their product you know and I, I thought of these existential thoughts probably you know concern me a lot more if, if i wasn't getting paid but and that's that's the easiest way to just shrug it off as well hey I, I got paid for being here you know you could sit down with a customer for an hour and listen to their story and why they need this immediately and you know finally they get out of the store and you think well that hour was wasted well at least i got paid 16 dollars for doing that so that's not bad but you know for all those customers the very few that, you know, sort of make that personal connection. And I guess that's the, the, you know, a bigger insight into all these people's lives. Because I'm sure for all the annoying customers, you know, it, it's so hard to imagine. But it's like they, there's people who, I, I mean, I sound, sound horrible saying this, but like there's people who value that person. Like they're love and, you know, they probably love other people as well. And, you know, even though they may be really annoying to deal with, it's like, they probably don't act that way, you know, to other people. I mean, maybe they do, but it's it's probably not on the same magnitude, you know, because they probably have the same thought process that I do, that, well, I'll never have to interact with this person ever again, so what's the point of being, you know, super friendly and trying to build a relationship? Like, that's, you know, I don't need to do that. And I, I certainly am guilty of feeling that way sometimes, you know. I mean, there will be customers who are asking for a lot of, insane things and honestly some of them you know it's like yeah i might be able to do that like you know i could help you with this or that but it's just easier to be like well no we can only do so much and just get them on their merry way so you don't have to deal with them anymore <laughs> but i can just remember one day you know coming home from work and looking out my window and there was just this guy working i think it was like an well, it wasn't an auto shop it was like this little lot off the side of the highway where they had taco trucks. Well, I guess just food trucks. And there was like a main building in the lot. And this guy was just right outside the main building. He looked like he was cleaning up the front of it, you know, because it was probably 8.30 at night or 8.30 p.m. So it was closing time or whatever. And I was just thinking like, you know, he's, he's not, I mean, I can't say he's in the same boat as me because obviously you have no idea, but you know, it's just thinking about how, like, yeah, he's working too, you know, and I'm, it's, he has all these dreams and aspirations and, you know, probably hobbies outside of work, you know, but right now, all you see of him is that he's working. You know, I mean, when I tell people what I do, you know, the first thing that 
people, specifically adults, you know, grown-ups are interested in is what I'm doing, which is, you know, working at where I work. And <clears throat> it's, I always find it weird that it's more interesting to me well, that I would be an office supply employee than, you know, what I'm interested in or what my hobbies are. And I think sometimes people try to ask what your hobbies are, but it's like, oh, you know, once you actually get asked, then sometimes you don't want to share because a lot of mine, you know, people much older than me wouldn't really understand it. You know, it's like, it's hard to explain to people, well, you know, I do video editing or I play video games. You know, they, I mean, I made a video on video games before. They just simply won't be able to understand why a 20 year old would play video games, but so I guess a lot of that is just, like, I'm not, wh where I work, you know, isn't exactly, you know, it's not me. It's definitely not me. And I just think that's the interesting part that so many people every day that I interact with are going to think, yeah, the worker at the office supply store that I went to, that's who did whatever, you know, and that's how they define me. And, and by that same token, I mean, any customer that comes in. You know, I'll be like, oh yeah, the annoying customer who wanted this. That's all I'll know them as, even though they're, you know, they're so much more than a customer. And for the ones that make that personal connection, it's so easy to see that they're more than a customer. You know, for the ones that kind of stop to tell you their story, when it's like, not only relevant, but used as sort of a, you know, piece of context, rather than an excuse as to why it needs to get done immediately. Because there are people more often than not, who will share some part of their life that explains why they need this immediately. And most of the time, it's like, yeah, that's crazy. I really couldn't care less. Sometimes it's like, okay, this makes sense, you know. But I guess for all those people, that's, you know, where you start to realize just how many people there are who have these, you know, because, I mean, and it sounds so stupid to say, like, oh, I didn't realize there was this many people, but, like, you think about all the people you've ever interacted with, and once you start working in retail, I mean, that number goes up dramatically every single day, you know? Because, whereas you think about how many times you go to a store in a given week, right? But imagine that you are on the other side of that interaction for eight hours a day. Then how many more people will you interact with, you know? I mean, every day, dozens of people. And you multiply that over every day that you work, for weeks and you multiply those weeks over all the different weeks you work you know and I mean the number it's starts to get insanely large you start to realize that you've interacted with so many people some of them are repeat customers you know and maybe some of them are actually people you knew I mean this one guy was uh he was the father of one of my friends in high school and I recognized him by the last name you know and we had a great connection over that but I guess the more and more you start to interact with people the more and more you realize like I mean, this is, this is the world, you know, there's millions and millions of people all wanting, you know, all focused on what they need and want, and there's a very few, select few of them, who aren't getting paid to do this, you know, by their own, uh, is it volition? I don't know, I don't know if that's the word. Basically, by their own will, as the customer... You know, they make that effort to get to know you or to make some quick personal connection. It doesn't even have to, you know, mean anything or go anywhere. It's just the fact that they tried and the fact that they found something that they thought was um, in common between you and that person. You know, that, I think that's where, like, I don't know, I, in, in a way that sort of gives me hope for humanity. Not that I had ever really lost it, but the fact that there would be people like that who would, you know, care enough to take, not really time out of their day, but to just, you know, to focus their energy on someone else. Because in the, in the haystack of just dozens of customers focused on what they want, you know, and a lot of times you can't blame them for focusing on what they want. You know, everyone, that's the other thing is, it's not necessarily their fault. I mean, everyone is living their own life. They're priority is whatever, you know, it, it's going to be themselves, but, but I guess to see 
just an even, you know, slight amount of effort to go out of their way and acknowledge, you know, someone who they may never have to interact with again. I guess that's just really impressive to me. It certainly makes my job a whole lot better. I wouldn't say easier. Well, I mean, my job's pretty easy as it is. I can't complain, but it certainly makes it a whole lot better. You know, those moments, because I mean, you know, well, do they really make it better? Yeah. I mean, I've worked there for two months. I've met dozens of people every day. And of all of those, at least hundreds of people, you know, there's only a select handful that I remember because they made, you know, that interaction with me. So that's my thoughts on retail customers and the whole retail experience as a whole. Uh, this is part two of my Armando Rambles series. I don't really have a f solid idea for what I'm going to do for part three. I kind of already knew that I was going to do uh, drugs and religion, and then I was going to do retail customers. Um, I might do an even lighter topic next time. Um, but yeah, leave any comments down below. I might, you know, if, like as a suggestion of what I should do, I might check it out. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Make sure to join my Discord server. And have a great day.